Have you ever felt a sharp pain in your back or a strange numbness in your legs and wondered what's really going on inside your body? What if I told you that the cause might be silently building up for years and it's not what you think? In this video, I'll uncover the hidden truth about disc herniations. Understanding how disc herniations occur is the first step to taking control of your pain. By identifying the root cause, you'll be able to determine whether you have a disc herniation, pinpoint its exact location, and know the right steps to fix it effectively. Stick around, because what you learn today might completely change how you understand and care for your body. 1. What is a disc herniation? To understand disc herniation, we first need to understand how the spine is structured. Between every two vertebrae in your spine, there's an intervertebral disc that acts as a shock absorber. It's like a small cushion with a soft, gel-like interior encased in a tough outer layer. These discs, combined with the solid vertebrae, form the spine and allow it to be both strong and flexible. Imagine a disc as a balloon filled with gel. When this balloon is under balanced and moderate pressure, it maintains its shape and functions well. However, when the pressure becomes too intense and focuses on one area, the gel inside starts to push towards the weakest part of the balloon. As the pressure builds, the outer layer might rupture, allowing the gel to escape. This condition is what we call a disc herniation. Two, what causes disc herniation? In the human body, every movement depends on muscle function. Bones, joints, and discs do not move independently. They are driven by muscles contracting and relaxing to create movement. However, if muscles aren't functioning correctly or are imbalanced, they can start overloading certain structures in the body. Here's an example. Imagine using only one hand for everything, carrying a bag, lifting weights, holding objects. Over time, one side of your body starts bearing more load than the other. This imbalance often becomes visible when one shoulder sits lower than the other. What happens to the intervertebral discs when the pressure is concentrated on one side? The disc compresses unevenly, causing the gel to shift towards one side, increasing tension there and eventually leading to a herniation. So what's the root cause of disc herniation? The answer is simple, muscle imbalance. This imbalance causes improper weight distribution and increased tension on the discs, making them vulnerable. Addressing this imbalance is the key to resolving herniations effectively. Three, what are the symptoms of a disc herniation? One of the most common mistakes people make is assuming that every neck, back, or lower back pain is caused by a disc herniation. In reality, studies show that around 30% of people have a disc herniation, yet most of them are completely unaware because they have no symptoms. Symptoms occur when the displaced disc starts pressing on a nerve root or even the spinal cord. It's essential to understand that symptoms are not universal. They depend on the exact location of the compression and the degree of inflammation. Depending on the affected area, here are the typical symptoms. Symptoms of a herniated disc in the neck. Not all neck pain is caused by a herniated disc. For a disc herniation in the cervical spine to cause symptoms, it must compress a nerve root. When this happens, the nerve becomes inflamed, leading to noticeable symptoms. These include numbness or tingling in the arms or fingers, weakness in the arm muscles, which can make it difficult to grip or hold objects, and pain that starts in the neck but often radiates toward the shoulders or down the arms. It's important to understand that simple neck pain without these additional symptoms is less likely to be caused by a herniated disc. Symptoms of a herniated disc in the thoracic spine mid-back. A herniated disc in the thoracic spine is less common, but can cause specific symptoms when it compresses a nerve. Pain is often felt in the chest area, which can be mistaken for heart-related issues. In some cases, numbness or tingling is experienced along the path of the affected nerve. Additionally, pain may worsen with deep breaths, coughing, or other movements that put pressure on the spine. It's crucial to identify these symptoms accurately to avoid confusion with other conditions. Symptoms of a herniated disc in the lumbar spine, lower back. When a herniated disc in the lumbar spine compresses a nerve root, it can cause a variety of symptoms that extend beyond localized back pain. 
These symptoms often include tingling, numbness, or a burning sensation, and the pain may radiate either down the back or the front of the leg, depending on which nerve root is affected. For example, compression of certain nerve roots may cause discomfort or weakness along the back of the thigh and calf, while others can impact the front of the thigh and shin. Identifying these patterns is key to understanding the specific nerve involvement and tailoring treatment effectively. This distinction sets nerve compression symptoms apart from general lower back pain. In future videos, I will share specific exercises for each disc herniation location, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't miss them. If you want to learn more about disc herniation in the neck and lower back, you can find detailed videos on my channel. Stay tuned for more tips to help you manage your pain and improve your health.